passive RFID transponders like key cards, work badges, key fobs, and even microchip implants are all fundamentally simple devices. They have an inductor, also called an antenna coil, which is sometimes wrapped around an iron ferrite core, and a microchip. Together, these two simple components interact with an RFID reader, which is sometimes called an interrogator. Even though passive RFID transponders function within the RF spectrum, the way they work is fundamentally different from typical radio devices. Traditional radio devices like cell phones, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth have an antenna or radiator that is designed to emit electromagnetic waves. These waves propagate out into free space and are picked up by receiving antennas. On the other hand, passive RFID devices are magnetically coupled with the readers they interact with, meaning they work exclusively within the magnetic field generated by the reader. This is why RFID is considered a near-field technology. Here we can see two magnetic coils that are coupled with each other. One coil emits an electromagnetic field and the other coil inducts power from it. This is how an RFID reader and magnetically coupled tag work together to pass power and data over a shared magnetic field. Let's take a look at some of the defining characteristics of passive RFID systems. Those are frequency, standards, air interface, encoding scheme, memory structure, and commands and features. With passive RFID transponders, there are two frequency families, high frequency, which is 13.56 MHz, and low frequency, which is 125 kHz through 134 kHz. There is another group of passive RFID transponders that operates between 700 MHz and 950 MHz. These tags operate using backscatter technology and are not magnetically coupled, so we won't bother with those today. Before we get any deeper into standards and air interfaces or encoding schemes, the one most important thing I want to communicate about RFID is that it's a pipe. It's like a telephone line. Data moves between tag and reader, reader and tag. It has nothing to do with the security or features or commands or anything. It's just a way and method to wirelessly move information and power between two devices. If you're doing any research on RFID, this is an important thing to keep in mind because sometimes there's misleading information posted. For example, nothing in this post is actually accurate. Uh, standard cards are not generally 13.56. There are still plenty of cards that are distributed that are 125 kilohertz. NFC is not just another kind of RFID technology. It is a subset of specific RFID technologies. The frequency band of 13.56 MHz does not only apply to proximity identification. For example, contactless payment cards also use this with specific RFID ISO standards. And as we just learned, readers and tags work together with a shared magnetic field. That means any claim about range or performance is suspect because actual range and performance is a function of both reader and tag antenna geometries and power output. Finally, car keys do not specifically use UHF. There are plenty of frequencies used, including 300 kHz, which is clearly in the low frequency range. Sometimes the errors are more nuanced, like in this post from a reputable RFID website. Here, it talks about ISO 1443A being designed to have a short read range. However, we just learned range is a function of RFID antenna and tag antenna working together. The interesting thing here is that it says the standard includes encryption. But it's important to note that this was a design intention and not actually included in the standard. There are plenty of ISO 1443 tags that are not encrypted and do not use encryption. The real faux pas is here, where it claims ISO 15693 has no encryption. It flatly states there is no encryption, and that's just wrong. Encrypted data or the use of encryption is clearly an application level function. And as we've learned, RFID and the standards around it had to do with data transmission and the protocols and standards used to do that, and not necessarily what the data is or if it's encrypted or not. For example, the advanced VivoKey Spark is an ISO 15693 device, but uses AES 128-bit encryption. It actually performs cryptography in the chip. The data passed between it and the reader when performing an encryption challenge has nothing to do with the standard across which that data flows. The important points that I wanted to convey in this video are that passive RFID chips are magnetically coupled devices. They don't broadcast anything, and when not inside the magnetic field of a reader, they are inert and don't do anything. Also, there are two major frequency groups for passive RFID, 13.56 MHz, which is high frequency, and 125 kHz or 134 kHz, which are in the low frequency family. Finally, I wanted to convey that RFID is simply a communication channel. Claims about something being secure or not secure or hackable or anything really don't apply to RFID. It applies to the application that RFID is enabling. I hope you liked this video and remember to subscribe so you don't miss part two.
Thanks for watching.